told him, I said, listen, man, I, I'm not looking out to to, to burn anyone. I'm, I want to do my shit and move. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not trying to battle. We're trying to better ourselves. Oh, no, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, if my shit, you know, kind of burns yours, then, you know, that's, you know, that that's how it, it, ha- it happens. Mm. But, like, when, when we used to do trains, we would, you know, I, I would concentrate on working on the whole car because it's not going to look right. My my thing looks better than the one next to mine, and they're going to be rolling together. Dude, you, know you I mean? just said that thing. That's just like the most iconic thing I think I've ever heard anyone say. <laughs> I just concentrated on doing the whole car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, Central London yeah. or Central as you need to be. You don't want to be anywhere. Trust uh, me. Right. Only the place to be. <laughs> yeah, and we're going transatlantic. If you ain't hearing the voices that are going on in the background, it's because you ain't turned up loud enough. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight to all the regular strain station. Of course, everyone's got the television app for that sport and art, street culture and music and more, all your products, yeah, etc. Yo, my brother, my brother. Yo, this is crazy, okay? I said uh-huh. I'll take it there. We're taking it there. This is a very exclusive one-off conversation with a VIP in my mind from the 70s onwards, an icon in the culture, bro. I'm going to throw it out there. The mighty part one, TDS. How are you, my brother? <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm okay. I'm um, just dealing with, you know, everyday life these days. It's not the same as, you know, it was. It is what it is, so we got to just keep moving forward, my friend. Yeah, very much so, sir. And moving mm-hmm. forward, you have, across the decades, you make it look easy for some of these cats that are coming up <laughs> right now and seeing how far you can take this graffiti uh, scene. Man. Yeah, I mean, look, man, I, I can only do what God allows me to do. You know, and... um he gave me the good fortune and uh, you know the, the good health, so I'm taking uh, taking it as far as I can, man. Yeah, I can't you imagine know? you jumping into any yards right about now. That's not really the order of the day, is it? <laughs> uh, quiet is kept. I can, you know, I, I maybe you know could swing a little, little some some, but you know that remains to be seen. Can you imagine if you did though? I mean, would you be like? Uh, would you be just in your element, the whole idea of retracing? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, like, it, it's like, um, damn, how you say it? Uh, it's like a time capsule. Hmm. You know what I mean? You, you, it, w- Once you're in that environment, it just, everything goes, you know, you, it, it all comes back to you. Does you it know? feel like, is it the sort of thing where you just, can you take your plate, your your head to that place, as soon as you, th- as soon as you oh, think about it? Oh, all the time. I mean, you know, there's sometimes that I sit and wonder, like, you know, I'm like, wow, you know, I I, I was here, you know, and it's like deja vu. <laughs> or sometimes, you know, you be dreaming, and uh, it's like, you know, you you go right back to when, you know, it happened. You know, there's there's so much. And it, it's just, it, it boggles the mind sometimes, you know. Do you, I just want to circle back around something you just alluded to then. Do mm-hmm. you do you dream of those days when you were actually super active there, like that? There, do you? There, In- there, there is some, the, the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's the good times. I mean, you know, sometimes there are some bad episodes, but you know, that's it, it happens. So you like they always say you gotta take the good with the bad. But um I've been lucky to have more good than bad. So 
it kind of like works itself out. You know what I mean? But that's what keeps me young, man. You know what I mean? Always, I always have something to look back to and everything. So, yeah, I and feel it, that. And it keeps you uh, motivated to move forward. Yeah, 100%. 100%. The, mm-hmm. the, the good and the bad in graffiti is like, it's really extreme, isn't it? Like, there's, there's a, yeah. little, a shit ton of bad, but then there's a yeah. shit ton no, of good. It's just so extreme. Yeah, it, ha- it has been. I mean, you know, in the beginning, it was, you know, also, you know, beautiful. It was, it was something, you know, worthwhile. And then it just took its course and like, you know, it's like everything else, you know, it mm. goes through its phase, you know, and then um, you kind of like just got to go through it and, mm. uh, you know, just hope for the best. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh-huh. At this point, I would just like to uh, give some credits out there. I mean, part one for me is one of the first generation New York writers, I know you'll probably beg to differ because you were there from the jump. You saw a lot of people that were orbiting around at the same time. Um, Mm -hmm. God, I wish I was there. (laughs) But, but, you know, TDS, you know, we're talking about an era, late 70s, would I be correct in thinking, maybe even earlier, where where you were like some of the uh, first pen pals, man. Well, my, um, you had the first, the first generation that was like right before me. I'm like caught in the middle. I'm between first and second generation. Mm-hmm. Um, TDS was uh, formed in 1976. And who was in TDS? Let's be clear on that so that we're um, up to speed. The original uh, members was um, Cool 131, <laughs> uh, Mr. Jinx 174, Padre 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bear 167, um, Chain 3. Wow. Um, there was, there was a couple other cat. Oh, uh, Buck, uh, not Buck, Deck 2. Deck 2. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, Magoo. 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 Was, was Flight in? Was Flight, I mean, I'm asking. Was, was Flight, flight in? Yes. Flight, um, was recruited like in 82, 83. Right. Okay. Because we were like on our way. I, I wrote till up to like 87. So when he came around, he was, um, he lived in Cool's neighborhood. Right. So he was, um, he was let in by Cool, which was the press. And, uh, he pretty much kept it going, you know, when uh, we were like uh, on our way out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a legacy! What was the vibe back in the day? Give, give me something to, to something from the recesses. How would you, how would you best describe the um, environment? Well, you know, because I think for a lot of us, especially from you know the transatlantic, the other side, if, uh, if mm-hmm. you will, it's it's a, a very romantic vision of what New York. Well, was. I mean, it, it, in the beginning, it was beautiful because it was, you know, it was young, it was free. I mean, yeah, you had your little um, episodes or whatever the case may be, but it was not. It was, like I said, it was fresh and clean and, you know, it was like formulating. It was like in its birth stage Hmm. because by that time, like by like 73, 74, like the early pioneers from like the early 70s, they Hmm. were on, you know, they were like leaving the scene. So it was like a change of God there. But then, you know, things got a little more elaborate. You know, the the pieces started formulating. Mm. You know, people started developing, you know, different styles and whatnot and different tags. Mm. And um, I say between 73 and 77, 78, Mm. those were the golden years. You know, because uh, when, when... 
everything started formulating and, and it started to develop, I mean, it was like beautiful because you had so many, you know, talented people that were doing stuff at the same time, mm. you know? So it was, it was a sight to behold, you know, because it was, you can go anywhere in the city and see something really, you know, playing out. And it was like, it was a sight to be seen. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, especially for the time that it was in, in New York. I saw yeah. this documentary on Manhattan and how it all came about. And, you know, the, the more seedier side of it. And I guess for that time, there was two opposite worlds. There was poor and then there was this glamorous yeah. exotica that was going on in, in, down to, yeah. uh, in downtown. Yeah. I mean, it's a shame that it was it, it kind of like always been that way. They right. always trying to they always trying to balance the scales, but at the end of the day, it always turns out that you know you have up here and you have down here. There's no middle scale there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's it's sad that it can't be an even scale. You know, and uh, it, it's good for everybody, mm. but you know, you just gotta you know li live with the 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 hand that God dealt you and uh, hope for the best. Yeah. And, and as proof in what we're about to get into, it's, it's what you put your energies into. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's the, what you've, what you've added to this, this big tapestry from such an early stage is, you know, it's, it's, it's contributive, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and I know before, before part one as a name, I understand you. You had a few others. You had a few other names that you went through. Um, Spider Man being yeah. one of them. I think Clue was another. One. I mean, I'm now I'm just digging. But you know, g yeah. give us a back. Give us some background on that. How did you get to part one as a name? Um, well, I mean, you know, like I said, I, I was, a, I was a kid. You know, I was like maybe ten years old, mm -hmm. eleven years old, and I was trying to figure out a name for myself. And I went through a couple of names, and then this one neighborhood cat that I grew up with, we went to school together and everything, um, he suggested, yo, try this, try part, <laughs> part one. And, man, the rest is history. And it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, at first I said, wow, this, is, this could work. And then, uh, li little lo and behold, it, it just it, it stuck, and I mean, it was it was perfect. It, it worked out just fine. Yeah, I, I, mean, I would imagine for its time, because I mean, mm -hmm. Clue Clue is a tag, and this is just me and my perception of it. It's there's a lot of curves, there's a lot of movement, but well, if, uh, at mm. that time there was not. I was still, de de you know, I didn't start developing until like about seventy three. Right. Oh, 73 right. To, 73 to 74, I, I was starting to develop uh, experimenting, experimenting with the letters. Was part because of the stiff, the, 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 the length and the angles of those letters. Was that an experiment in itself to you? Because if you uh, mastered that, then you're winning. No, I mean, you know, the thing is, like, um, a lot of people, they develop their style from, a, from tagging. Mm. You know what I mean? My thing was, um, I was looking at the style that was being, you know, displayed in them days, and I would go, I would take it, process it, and then, you know, spit it my way, mm -hmm. put my spin on it, you know? And, um, I mean, I, I did very, you know, pretty good with it. Yeah, I you think know? so. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? Well, I, I, along the way, you know, we I had, you know, I had some people that, you know, helped me tweak my stuff. I mean, you know, the the main thing was I never had a mentor. Mm. You know, like some guys, wow. you know, they they had people that that mentored them, you know, and I pretty much like taught myself, you know, by just processing what I saw and then, you know, doing what I, I felt you know, was coming out the head. Mm. Who was who was mostly who was the biggest mentor to a lot of people of its time? Like, did you um, know that there was one go to or two go tos that people well, would always lean on? Phase two, uh, rest in rest in peace. He was mm. um, one of those guys that would mentor other writers. He would, you know, 
give them uh, sketches and stuff and like, here, you know, build on that. You know what I mean? Wow. I, yeah, I eventually, you know, that happened. That was a, a phase in my, uh, you know, career where I helped uh, numerous individuals with their stuff, you know, by doing the same thing that he did. I didn't meet him till later on, like in the 80s. Mm. But, you know, I, I was glad that I did get to meet him because, you know, his his um his legacy in the in the graph world, he gave me my props, you know, wow. which was um, you know, it was it was a beautiful thing. Brother, and I, that's crazy. I always I always uh, you know respected that, you know, from him. Mm. And um yeah. Um, why so late? How come it took you, you guys, a while to 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 buck? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, so because one, I I had some bad experiences at the the writers' bench, so I never was frequenting there. Well, what experiences he, did you have? What, 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 what elaborate, please? No, I, 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 they weren't good. They weren't good. I mean, you know, I I was approached by um the police there. And then there was an incident one time when I was a kid there and uh, something happened and I never went back. Really? You know, I, I, yeah. And I said, you know what, man, I don't need to be there. Let me just do my thing. And, um, that's what I did. And Does, doesn't it make you more exclusive though? When you say, fuck that, I'm not going to do what everyone else does. No, I, I, know, I mean, you know, I, I kind of missed that man, because that was like, you know, that was a thing back in the days to be at the writer's bench, but, you know, the problem is, man, you know, sometimes there's people there and you don't know who's there and uh, their, alter their ulterior motives are not, you know, keen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't want to be around that, you know, because then, you know, God forbid something happens, you know. Mm -hmm. So my choice was not to be there, you know, and I just said, you know what, I don't really need that, you know. Uh, for the uh, time, actually, how dangerous was it? For, for, for the time, how? I mean, we're talking like, you know, real extreme New York of its time, wasn't that? Well, must have been I mean, scary. This was uh, like in 74. And um, at that time, you know, you still had some gang stuff going on and what have you. And then you always had the, the element of um, uh, 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 the street, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, you never knew what was going to happen. You know, you always had to be on point. You know, it's unfortunate that it it was that it, you know that's something that it it, it could happen at any time, anywhere, yeah. anytime. But there, you know, that was supposed to be a place where you know writers were you know to go and um, meet other writers and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. like I said, you know, sometimes other people, you know, people writers had ulterior motives and. Uh, it wasn't a cool thing, man. You know what I mean? Mm. So um, what are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? I often feel like sometimes, although mostly misunderstood, the people that come into yeah, the game. I, you know. I mean, you know, it, it just, it, it's it's kind of like the uh, the black cloud of the uh, situation. And, and sometimes it always, there's always one or two that, you know, ruin it for everything else so mm, it's true you know um going back to the mentoring thing who did who did you mentor i'd be really curious to know that uh quite a few um i mentored uh there was these two partners that they they pretty much you know they they did a pretty good damage on the line like um sly 108 mm. piece. Um, who is that sorry Fly 108. Yeah. He, he was a neighborhood cat, but he he got up. You know, he he done uh he he um he got around. Then uh there was another cat, Puma 107, rest right. in peace as well. You know, and these guys were neighborhood guys, you know. Um and then there, you know, a couple of guys from the crew, you know, that I that I uh mentored as well. You know, and then there were some other writers as well. You know, offhand, I, I there's been so many that I uh, help. You know, with their uh, 
a good style, style and bit. technique. Yeah. What's the first but, uh, bit of advice you give to uh, um, young writers or, or older writers? What, what kind of advice do you give them in, any, when to study? Anyone, do, do not be afraid. You know, do not be afraid to experiment. That's the only thing. A lot of people they're afraid. You know, oh, it's not going to come out right, or, or it's not. You know, it's not going to look good. Mm. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Who cares? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, do. we all we all start at some point. You know, like my first pieces, they were like, you know, they were not all that, but then they started to develop. You know, they started mm. to take some shape and form. And mm. even like my early stuff. So, and, and like there was this one guy that he, he was in my school and um, it got to the point that he was asking me that if I could burn this writer or that writer and, and we eventually be, became crewmates. Wow. And I, I'm like, I looked at him and I like told him, I said, listen, man, I, I'm not looking out to... <laughs> To, to burn anyone. I, I want to do my shit and move. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We're not trying to battle. We're trying to better ourselves. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, if my shit, you know, kind of burns yours, then, you know, that's, you know, that that's how it, it, it happens. Mm. But, like, when, when we used to do trains, we would, you know, I, I would concentrate on working on the whole car. Because it's not going to look right. My my thing looks better than the one next to mine, and they're going to be rolling together. Dude, you, know you I mean? just said that thing. That's just like the most iconic thing I think I've ever heard anyone say. <laughs> I just concentrated on doing the whole car. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, Whoa, if, you, if you're working with someone else, like I, I, there was a cat one time, a crew member, and I, I took these guys to to one of my spots. Right. So when we got to the to to the tunnel where we was going into, when he found out that he wasn't going to paint with a certain individual, he got all upset and like he said, "Oh man, I'm going to leave." I said, "No, you're gonna you're gonna paint with me." Mm -hmm. and that's it, and that's what we did. You know, so still, the, the yeah, becomes no, the, 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 the this this whole. The idea of it is so fucking genius, and but it's so passe now. It's such a <laughs> given now. But at that time, it was really not a fucking given. <laughs> How did I mean? No, the, the, the progression is, was crazy, know, right? Well, see, the thing is, uh, some people that spoiled, you know, and um, some people know how to go with the flow. Mm. You know, uh, I always been a type that. Um, I adapt to my environment. Mm -hmm. You know, I could fit in where, you know, you'd be surprised. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you're better off that way. Because if you, if, if it's going to be a thing where, oh, it's going to be me, 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 then you know what? You're going to see yourself by yourself. It's that survival <laughs> tactic. I would um, I would argue that's, a, that's an asset to surviving <laughs> world, the world, no. isn't it? Yeah, well, look, man. If if you can't fit in, what are you gonna do? Yeah, you know, are you gonna be a baby about it and uh, you know, scream and pout, or mm. are you gonna want to, you know, okay, let's go with it and uh, let's make it happen? Mm. You know, mm. yeah. And, and I, I feel like I feel like graffiti is like one hell of an exercise in tenacity, particularly <laughs> in a community sense. You know, socially, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> well. I, the the thing is, man, you know, there's a lot of there, there's always been a lot of egos in this mm. in this game, you know. And I always say, man, you know, uh, sometimes you got to leave your ego at the door. For real, you know, because once you walk through that door, there's no turning back. You know what stops so, you from what stops part one from? I mean, I'm just giving you so many flowers right now uh mm -hmm. it's not it's almost like rebounding off your anti-ego anti <laughs> body armor <laughs> like yeah. what's the secret how is does age come with wisdom or is it is it deeper um, than that you know what i was brought up that way right. i'm from a different cloth you know and um 
I, I was instilled in you know in me that you know you you get along with everyone you know there's no like there's no bigger badder or whatever or better mm. you know we're all the same at the mm. end of the day we are all the same believe it or not you know mm. and I don't care how much you know it, you can you could be a millionaire you could be a, a, a broke person whatever at the end of the day it's you know how you present yourself you know that's what's going to attract you know good things super so, important isn't it huh super important isn't it i mean you know it's something to 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 keep in mind you know because a lot of people are really you know they they couldn't cope with life you know mm-hmm. they're no longer with us and that's really sad, you know. So yeah. Let, yeah. Let's, let, let's take a moment and, and you know, like really it it could be worse or it could be better. So pick your poison. <laughs> so true. Um <laughs> and when it comes to egos as well, the, yeah. the, the, the human we all go through different things in life that lead up to the point where we are now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the ego of a person likes to remove that history path. Yeah. But, but, but the whole reason why their ego exists is based on the experiences that they, they've had. Right? I, I mean, you know, they're, they're, you know, there, there are people that, okay, maybe they're, they're built for that. But at the end of the day, I mean, you have to get along with everyone, mm. you know, that's what makes the world go round. Mm. And, you know, if you have someone with a big ass ego that can't function or, or deal with individuals, then what good is having a big ass ego? Yeah, 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 totally. You know what I mean? I, I'd rather be a, a normal person that that can get along with everybody, and there's no egos involved. You know, yeah, compared to you know, an egotistical maniac that that you know, do do the math. Yeah, 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 for real. I mean, I, 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 in, in the echelon of, of egoless people that contributive, you know, we, we've mentioned phase two, there's, of course, yourself. Ramel Z, mm-hmm. I think Ramel Z, hands down, I, I feel like contributively, he's given so much. Yeah, um, he, he, was, he was a good dude, man. I mean, I, I met him in the 80s and uh, he gave me, I mean, he held me at a very high uh, esteem, and I was like, you know, I was dumbfounded about that. But you know, he was a generally a good guy, mm. you know. And for him to, you know, put me in that particular position, you know, I, I was really uh, humbled by that, you know. So, mm. well, I mean, sticking with that. The, the first encounters I, encounters I had with him, yourself, and a bunch of others, I guess, was later in the stages of your career when we're talking about 80s, you know, Style mm-hmm. Wars and Wild Style, which I know that you had a, you know, your imprint was all over it, <laughs> all over that yeah, era. Right? Believe it or not, I was not part of the, the scenario. But neither was Phase 2, which I found interesting. I didn't, you didn't, you don't see, you didn't see him so much, neither. No. I understand. There was a there's a lot of people that was not uh, part of that thing, you know. And um, I'm good friends with Mr. Shalfont, with mm. Henry Shalfont. You know, I don't, yeah. you know. Of course. I mean, it, really, realistically, he, he could have reached out to other individuals, mm. you know, including myself. It would have really uh, been a, a keen idea, but. They did what they did, and, you know, I look at it this way. It was good for the culture because sure. it showed people, It showed people, you know, a certain side to it, you know. Mm. And um, that, that's the important thing, you know, because uh, our culture is always frowned upon as being taboo and, you know, yeah. so... Every little I, I helps, it, kind of yeah, thing. I, yeah, I always try to communicate that with people, especially people that they're not involved with the culture, that are outside looking in. Mm. You know, and um, it's a stigma that that is still uh, 
to this day, you know, stands out. Still strange, isn't it? That people still have that after 40, yeah. 50 years of nonstop <laughs> impact. Well, believe, <laughs> but believe it or not, there are people that do admire and, and are really um, intrigued by the culture. Mm. So that, that kind of like helps weigh, you know, the odds and make it a little more bearable. Yeah, and I wonder, I wonder where that intrigue lies because it, it's graffiti as a as a culture isn't the it's very closed doors. It's not. It, it's it's like a matrix to to those that live it and breathe it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's it's perceived only because of what's been told through mm. the media and what have you. You know, when someone approaches a, a individual, a writer or whatever, and they strike up a conversation and then they realize, wow, you know, I've always pictured it to be this way and or that way. And, you know, you, you just shattered a whole different, you know, light towards the situation. And I've gotten that, you know, to a lot of people, you know. And I've, I've, like I said, I've been doing public speaking and all of that since um, 1997. Wow! Whoa. And you know, wow. it doesn't it doesn't change. You know, you're always going to come across people that they if they don't know what's going on, they're going to treat it as a negative issue. Really, but, to that degree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you communicate with them and you show them, you know, what's really going on with it, they shed a different light on it. You know what I mean? Maybe um, maybe you might help answer perhaps what um, the, one of those stigmas might be, because um, obviously I, I do not share this view whatsoever. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but to the to the um, to the mops, the members of public. Um, yeah. Their, their their interpretation of it is the the pieces are beautiful, but the tagging's damage, quote unquote damage. And I it and and in their mind, I guess it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. The fact that it comes into their world without permission, I think right, that right. I think that troubles the commercial crowd. Well, and I, I, and that, I don't get it. What, what happens with that is okay. You got to remember when when this thing first. Derived itself from it was at, on the public uh, surface, mm. which was um, which happens to be the train. Mm. You know what I mean. So during the course of time, once the train got taken away, then you know where were you going to channel that um, all that energy, mm. all that uh, vibe? What's the last train that was out of service? Was it the early nineties? Wasn't it? That was the, one of the last. I, 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 I offhand, I don't remember because um, I done my last one in nineteen eighty seven. Believe it or not, eighty seven, so, eighty seven, eighty seven. And I get it because that's your medium which you would work to. How impactful that would be on society is, you know. <laughs> Between one to ten is probably like a three. <laughs> but as yeah. soon as the, as soon as the authorities or the people managing the trains wanted that removed, that's where the are you saying yeah. that's where the real problem started like uh, coming to play? I mean, look, it, it's like anything else. If um, if you had say you had a location where you had um, a lot of activity going on, mm. if you take that location away, what's going to happen? It's gonna go elsewhere, ain't it? They're going to they're going to look for another uh, avenue, another location to mm. continue doing what's what they're doing. Mm. You know what I mean? In this case, when the trains got taken away, <laughs> there was nothing else to do but to go to the street. Mm. You know, and um, I, for one, I wasn't gonna, you know. That that wasn't gonna happen with me. I'm sorry. I, mm. I just, you know, I said, okay, fine, whatever. The trains are gone. I'm just gonna move on, and uh, you know. But 
you know, other people have different uh, itineraries. So, mm. you know, what, what are you going to do? Well, that's a, it's kind of a, a warning from history there, you know, because with gentrification going across all these cities yeah. across the world, they're taking away Hall of Fames as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, you want to have uh, beautiful buildings and all of that and um, communities, but then you're going to take that away from everybody as well. You're not going to give them the uh, a little option or whatever. You know, that in a way, that's not cool. No. Not. You gotta have somewhere where they they can at least vent, create whatever. Yeah. You know. And at this point, we don't condone any activities that go on the trains. It's fucking dangerous out there. Everyone, be careful. Yeah. Oh no, I know, I know. Yeah. Just the other day, they showed a, a video. These two lads, they were on the track, and the trains all, almost ran them over. Where was and this? I'm like, somewhere here in uh, in New York. No way. Uh, in, in New York State. But wow. uh, it wasn't a regular subway. It was a big. It was a locomotive, and wow. these two, these two lads were on the tracks, and the camera from the from the cab shows them running in front of the train, trying to get her out the way. Mm. I'm like, oh my god, what are these two kids doing? Mm. And they were just, you know, they weren't doing nothing. Wrong. You know, you shouldn't have been there. That's number one. But mm. you know. Come on, if you can't hear a damn train approaching you, you got a problem. Yeah, yeah, you're drunk, inebriated, or you're just... No, but these these were kids, man. I, I don't know what they were doing on those tracks like that. I mean, you know, I guess they were just joy walking. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, we had a situation here um, last month, man. You had two French guys. Yes, that that's right. Yeah. And um, they were Rest going in peace. To a, yeah, they were going to a place where we used to frequent often. The problem is the the way that they were entering the the location. You have to be, I mean, super aware because, you know, as you can see, that's what happened, man. It's a, it's a shame. God rest rest in peace to both of them. But mm-hmm. you know, it's I would have picked another location, not there. How much? You, I'm just going back to to young young and. Uh... <laughs> and thoughtless, <laughs> immortal young people. We uh, we all were. Um, mm-hmm. You were you were you were frequenting in the tracks at a very early age. You must know a lot of uh, twists and turns in those, like you say, you know, for for the passing terrible passing of um, the two well, French. Um, yeah, runners. you know, number one, you gotta um, you have to be aware of your environment. Okay, that's number one. And number two, anytime you're dealing with a live track, that's the chance that, you know, you, you it's like playing Russian roulette, mm-hmm. you know, because you, you have to be aware of that, you know, that train coming, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, my early experiences um, dealing with elevated tracks, I, I number one, I, w- I was afraid of heights. And I have to deal with that element. So, okay, you you put in the fact that you're afraid of heights, and then you have to deal with a moving train if, mm. if need be. Oh so, God, that just sends shivers down my spine, bro. <laughs> well, Whoa. I mean, you know, I, I I had some bad experiences with that, and then I said, you know what, this is not going to work for me. Mm. It's going to be it's going to be tunnels from here on in, and that's what you know. I became a tunnel rat, and that was it. Yo, I would be that guy. <laughs> With the equation. Yeah, because like the thing is, but when it's I'm, raised, like you yeah. can see down. Like it's not like it's flat and you just think you're on some steady. No, yeah. you see down no, and it moves. Yeah, it, it's it's quite it's quite scary, man. And I mean, I knew I knew guys that they had no problems, you know, uh, uh, maneuvering in that that shit, but. I had one bad experience, and I said, "You know what? I'm never going back there." What was the experience? What did you go through? Um, we got raided. Oh, it was it was eight of us. We was doing two whole cars. This was, who was there? Uh, who was who was writing? This was in 1974. Um, one of those guys was uh, Sly 108. He's the one that took us there. He uh, 
he treated us to two bags of paint. It was um, him, myself, it was a guy named Bon, uh, my, my old partner, rest in peace, Panic, uh, this other guy, DeFi, mm. his brother, Care, uh, this other cat, Trix, that he used to uh, bomb the six line. Well was, remembered. All, all, all together, it was eight of us, right? Mm. And um, when we got up to the uh, station, when we got off the train, you know, we have to wait till the train pulls out. Then we have to walk down the track. Mm. And that's what we did. So when we got to the, in between the, the, the stations, we picked the uh, two trains that we were going to do and uh, we started doing them. Mm. And the train that happened to come by, it stopped where we were at. And the front door opened, so that meant somebody was coming off to that train and coming onto the tracks. So we split up, and a few of us went under the train and under the track. And out of nowhere, it was like they knew where we were at. The The cops came up, two of them, and they looked up, and they had the flashlight on us, and they said, uh, okay, you guys, you know, let's go. And then one of them says, oh, you could jump down. <laughs> My and the other Lord. the other cop says, "No, you can't, you can't jump down." So I was like, "You know what? I'm not going to get caught because um, my mom was in Puerto Rico and my father was home. So I was like, I can't, you know, I, I was I wasn't going to go through that. So I left them under there. I climbed up. Mm. I went on top of the train and I laid there for a little bit, and I could see down below." Um, it was a gas station nearby and I see people pointing up there and I like, you know, they were like, it was a big raid. Wow. So I waited for like a half hour. Then I walked to the following station. Hmm. When I got to the station, there was nobody there because it was like around 10, 11 o'clock at night. Right. So I went to the front of the station because the stairs was in the back. Yeah. So I went and I sat down on the platform waiting for the train. And when I looked, I saw a cop come up the stairs, look around, and then he he left. Mm. So that night, four of us got away and four got caught. Wow. I was one that got, I was one that got away. Wow. My my partner panicked. When he showed up to the block, he asked a couple of the guys, did they see me? They said, yeah. Hmm. He said, oh, okay. So that night, four got caught and four got away. And um, <laughs> I, I said after that, I said, no more elevated for me. Nope. I ain't my life, mate. <laughs> that, that's okay with me. I'll stick. I'll go to my tunnels and yards and I, I'll deal with solid ground. <laughs> wise very wise sir yeah, yo that man. is a story do you um I, I don't know the name of it there was a documentary i saw that uh, oh god i mean they, they're gonna punk me out on the comments for not remember this <laughs> <laughs> you these guys are ever so vigilant um okay. uh there's a place in new york where there's huge pieces on the ground um underground i'm not sure if it still exists now but there's mm -hmm. a document Bentry made about it as well um, that's the first snapshot that comes into my head. I would imagine the tunnels were quite the opposite and it was very much seedy. I, I mean, the thing, the thing with tunnels, um, like one, there, there's, you have some abandoned stations that they were no longer in use. And a lot of people, they, you know, they would go do those things. And then you have the actual tunnels themselves that people like, you know, they like to put tags up and, and outlines and what have you. But the problem with that, you know, you have those are live tracks, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there's been some accidents, man, where some some cats, you know, they got killed mm -hmm. literally just, you know, trying to cop tags. And that's, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's sad. Uh, I I always frequented where they park trains. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my thing. And um 
or like on a bush uh, bombing level, or like back jumps? Say that again. Well, like on a, on a bush bombing level, or you know, back jumping. It was it more you were trying to get the trains like that, or were you doing track sides? No, because uh, my thing was I, I was, you know, on a mission. I was planning to do either, you know, I was probably going to paint the car, the whole car. Mm. So, therefore, you have to find a, sp- a, a place. There was places that would do um, that we would go that was during the day or weekday. Mm. It was only in there for a few hours. Okay, mm. you have that choice, and then you had uh, the weekend stuff, places that they will put there for a weekend, basically from Friday to Monday. So you had the whole weekend to play with. Oh my God! <laughs> I, just I mean, that... you know, it, it, it was it, it was um it was a task, but I mean, sometimes you would do something elaborate. You know, you you would I would do one car. Mm. I was satisfied with that, and then there was other days that I had you know a lot of energy. I would pull off two or three cars. You know, no, 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 this isn't normal, man. Like <laughs> to do one piece is a lot. That's a lot, and I don't mean just mean in the you know resources and pain and stuff. It, it energy, man. Like especially right. if you you're ignoring your stomach and you're just carrying up. Like that's a lot of energy just for one whole car. Surely. No, I know, I know. But you try to do two or three, and like I said, I was young then. I was like a teenager. I can't pull that stunt now. What do you reckon the age range is for someone that could do that? What what is the what's the optimum age for that kind of activity? And when does it start uh, depreciating? Um you're at your peak when you're like about uh you know 15, 16. Yeah. You know, that's when you you, you got the energy for that and the legs. <laughs> and then um uh, you're good up to like your uh mid to upper twenties. But once you hit like 30, 30, you know, from 30 to 40, it, it starts diminishing a little bit, not quite that much, mm. you know. And then from 40 to 50, it, you know. You feel the impact. Yeah, I mean, you know, mm. it's, believe it or not, it's it's work. You know, mm. people think, oh, you're just, you know, you, you're having fun or whatever, whatever. No, no. Yeah, you're having fun. Okay. But it calls for uh, a little, you know, work. Strategy. You know? A bit more strategy than you Yeah, you got to, you know, you, you work in the whole body, man. Really. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, if you got to go up and down a ladder or something, uh, there you go. The, yeah, the, you know? that in itself is, uh, yeah, that is, is, yeah, it's a it's challenge. A chore. Yeah. It's a chore. And then, uh, you know, you don't want to rush what you're doing because then, you know, you're going to, you know, you're not going to be happy with the outcome. So, you know, mm-hmm. you, as you're working, you got to stop, fall back, scale, you know, look it over and everything and uh, continue on. So, I mean, it, I've got so many questions to ask you about this because <laughs> it, because very rarely do I get, well, there's been a, a handful on this show, you know, with 350 plus deep, but never have I ever segued into this topic of what age does to someone's um, creative output as, you know, the years. Uh, well, the go thing on. is, look, I, I just turned 63 and um, I continue to, you know, be creative. You don't um, look 63, by the way. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> Thank you. At all. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's just, it's a matter of the timing, you know, and um, I, I had to slow down because I, I was always working at a rapid pace. Mm. But uh, a few years ago, I suffered a mini stroke <gasps> and that, that was not cool. You know, uh, it kind of oh, like, uh, woke, yeah, it woke me up. Uh, it said, look, you know, you got uh, one, you got to take your meds. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, stay out the sun. Because I used right. to paint. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mind painting in the sun. But after a while, it, it'll take its toll. 
What's, what does the sun do? What is in what from like skin point of view? Because you said you had a stroke. What, does is that contributive well, in some some respect? Well, the the thing is, yeah, it, it, you you it dehydrate, dehydrates the body. If you're okay. not if you're not drinking fluids, you're gonna dehydrate. Mm -hmm. And some guys they like to drink alcohol, and that's a no no. I have. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. This is this is this creeps into the graffiti culture most yeah. most days. Yeah. And uh, you will pass out. You know what I mean? You will mm -hmm. pass out. Mm -hmm. But my thing was a little more complicated because, you know, I was supposed to take uh, meds. Um, my family has a history of uh, issues with the heart and everything. And mm -hmm. I kept putting it off and putting it off. And when that happened, it, it came to a head. And I said, you know what? I can't screw around with my health. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been a good lad. I've been taking my meds. Good man. <laughs> you know, and uh, I'm just, I just pace myself now. Um, I don't paint as fast as I used to. Um, I'm a little more diligent with what I'm doing now. And uh, I, I, I make it happen. I, I enjoy myself more. You know? Yeah, I get it. And I think to, to, to a fan, if I was to see part one piecing, in his mind, it would probably be like, I've been here for like four hours. Don't start bugging. But people want to see you paint. So it's good that you're slowing down a bit, right? No, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the only sad thing is like with this pandemic, I haven't been able to go anywhere. Um, last year, I went to Sweden and participated with, with a little uh, uh, mural paint down there mm -hmm. with some other artists. And it was, it was really cool. Fantastic. You know? Mm. Yeah, um, a couple of years ago, I was in London. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Tizer. Absolutely, hold tight. ID Tizer. Are you a tea kid as well, right? Yeah, no, but I was with Tizer. Tizer. Yeah, yeah, you came through to my show, my live show. You, do you remember you came to Shoreditch and you had a table upstairs and you were okay. selling yeah. your pieces there? That, that, yeah, that yeah. was the show yeah. I did, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. Well, we did the installation for the uh, restaurant. That's correct. That's right. Right. And uh, the, the guys were really cool, man. The owners of the restaurant, man. Unfortunately, it, it folded. It oh. only lasted like a year. But uh, I had a good time, man. I, I spent a good time there while I was there. And, um, you know, it was, nice, it was a nice experience. You know, I like London. You know? Yeah, and, and you yeah. came through with T Kid, didn't you? Um, Chrome and Black. Well, that was that was uh, about graffiti shop. A year or two before that. That's correct. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you came down to the Trellick Hall of Fame. Right, well. right, right, right. But that I, I came also. Uh, this fella from over there from London, he uh, arranged for me to come over there. You know, to to participate. Maybe it was Met. Was it Met? <laughs> Uh, well, I met Matt, but uh, mm. the guy's name is Dominic. Okay. Dominic Bedford. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I spent mm. a couple of days there, and I got uh, I painted at the uh, Trellick. Yeah, legendary. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're good people, man. I met I, I met good people in London, man. I, I'm always in contact with. So. Absolutely, London loves you, bro. Like this, you know. There's a and, handful and I, of people who travel, and you're one I, of them. I, I love London back, man. That between London and Paris, those two places is like you know I spend a lot of time there. Yeah, I'm man. Actually, I'm actually going to Berlin next week. Stop it! <laughs> Berlin's the spot, man. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a participating in uh, an event down there. A life painting event. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it because I haven't been to Berlin since 2009. 2009. Where, yeah, well, the 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 company that published my book, they're based there. So wow. that was the last time I was there when uh, my book was released in 2009, and um, I haven't been there since. The graffiti scene over there is crazy. Yeah, and uh, this guy, he contacted me. He said, look, I'm going to plug you into this, you know, contact these people, and uh, we're going to make it happen. So that's the future. What else is good? What else is happening in the, um, the, the months and years to come, bro? 
the, right now that uh, I'm gonna do that, then I'll probably make a, a quick stop in the Netherlands. I got uh, a friend of mine there. He's he's trying to plug me into something down there, and then um, I'm just gonna see what happens uh, later on in the year. I mean the the situation with um, with the Russians and and what they're doing over there, it kind of yeah. like set everything back a little bit, you know. So yes, terrible. But um. I'm I'm like you know whoever wants to uh, invite me anywhere if, if the budget is right I'm there you know I'm willing to you know go anywhere at this point it doesn't matter to me just want to get out now in it man just want yeah to get out. I've been cooped up for you know two years man come on yeah yeah <laughs> cut cut <laughs> king some slack man <laughs> no, this, 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 wo- this woman is driving me crazy <laughs> <laughs> the way I'll censor that bit out. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean she she gets out. She goes to work because she works in New York. Oh, so she's all right. okay. The girls are all right. I'm retired. I'm home. Mm. So mm. <laughs> and I don't go out like I used to. I don't. There's nothing out there. You know, um, I don't go out. So and I haven't traveled as much as you know normally. Usually, in a, in a, a good. Good round, like two or three times through the year, I'll be out somewhere. Excuse me. I have to you be know? honest with you, though. I've never met a more proficient for 63 years old. And this, I do not want this to come as in any way condescending, in mm-hmm. any way patronizing. It's more in awe how quick responsive you are on social media, how quick you are with apps, how quick you are with technology. You do not mess about. I mean, <laughs> listen, I'm a dinosaur, though, still. It's not true. (laughs) When uh, when it comes to all of this stuff, trust me. Uh, But I I make do. I I make shit happen. I I do what I got to do. And um, I keep the ball rolling, man. Yeah, man. You you have to. You have to. Roll on Berlin. That's what I say, my brother. (laughs) Uh, No, I'm looking looking forward to it. Uh, A lot of people are waiting for me down there. They're... They can't wait for me to get down there, you know, and um, I look forward to it, man, you know. Well, if you get the chance and you can make a pit stop in London, yeah, oh. you need to come fine, brother. No, the, the 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 year is still young, man, you know. That's right. So, I, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm making new friends along the way, and uh, hopefully it'll be the beginning of uh, new things to come, man, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm definitely, you know, um, I would like to return to London at some point, you know, sooner than later. The red you know? carpet would be rolled out. There's tea in the pot here, drinks <laughs> in the fridge. I, listen, I don't need no red carpet, man. All I, <laughs> my friends is good enough, man. You know Bless what I mean? I have, I have some good, solid friends there. So that's all I need. No, no red you. carpet, man. Not for me. Oh, nah. mm. Leave that for the queen. <laughs> yes, yes. Now you come to mention, I do believe we have one somewhere. Yes, yeah, she's, she's, she's having a ball right now. I yes, yes. Yeah, so so yeah, far, I don't know about the rest of her family, but like, she definitely is uh, celebrated right now. Yeah, <laughs> good for her, man. I applaud that, man. You know, she's been in the game for so long. Yeah, can you imagine? You know? Yeah, it's just crazy. I, I, I'm hoping, you know, I, I'm looking for another 20 years. Of, of service here <laughs> yeah hell yeah bro the the, the, so, the years are young man Keep no it moving. i know i know i mean look Beautiful. man i just i thank god for for you know the blessings and everything and i don't do not take anything for granted mm. you know so i i just keep the ball moving man you know yeah dude part one man thank you so much for joining us you guys don't go anywhere don't forget there's more boxes around here where you can check out more stuff <laughs> to the next conversations keep it rolling out. Keep man. part one man thank you so much for joining us today thank you for having me man it was a pleasure man a real pleasure was ours man big shout mm-hmm. out to everybody that joined Thank in you. got them comments rolling listen sharing is caring you know what it is all right we don't do it for anybody else but you guys all right, spread the word. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We are like in was out of fashion. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Stay lucky. Nice one, part one. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, man, for having me, bro. Oh, good, my brother. Peace. Um, <laughs> <laughs>